What up? Welcome to the Rap Throwback. Your boy Megatron with my homie Soundwave on the line. What's happening, man? What's what's happening, dude? What you got going on back there, man? Just chilling, man. Getting finally getting over the the virus that you don't want to get. You finally got the Rona. Huh? Rona. Yeah, I finally got the Rona, man. Man, it's that's crazy. Fucked up. Yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it was more annoying than anything. Yeah. I didn't get real sick, so that's a that's a plus. I just had symptoms that lingered forever. Yeah. But uh, I'm officially not contagious oh, today. Oh yeah, so I'll finally get try to get back to normal next week. Jeez. The fam is recovering from it too. Yeah. So when do they allow you back to work? House. Um, I could have went in today. They're working today and tomorrow, but I'm yeah. just gonna wait till Monday. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I'd wait. <laughs> Ride it out. Milk it. Yeah. I, well. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting um, Corona benefits, so it's paid for. So nice. I, I'm not worried about it. So. Yeah. I'll catch y'all on we- on Monday. Y'all can work the weekend and have fun. Yeah, well, hopefully you don't get it again. Some people get it more than once. That yeah, sucks. I hope not either. They got that super contagious variant. That, the variant. Yeah, the new variant. Uh, I guess even if you're vaccinated, it doesn't matter. The vaccine doesn't do shit to the new one. Oh, that's just great. And it spreads, like, I think it was four or five times faster. Really? Yes, uh... Yeah, I guess uh, they found they found this variant in Africa, and it only took weeks to spread across the world, when the others took months. So How I don't does that know. Even happen? I don't even know, man. Like mm. <clears throat> that's crazy shit. shit. Mutates and changes. Yeah, shit that's way over my head. No doubt. I have been uh, bumping this record. That we're gonna go over today, the game. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, man, that was cool. I like the uh, I like the pick this week. Yeah, I'm a I'm a, a game fanboy, but uh, this isn't an album that I bump a lot. I don't know why, but just never never did. I think I think initially when I got it, like I didn't care for Meek Mill, so there was like some features on here that I didn't necessarily care for. That's probably what turned me off on it. There's a lot of good songs, but like some of the features were not impressing me at the time, but going through it again, it was nice to to hear it all over again. And it hit different this time. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at the features. There's a lot of uh, features. Yeah. Left and right. It doesn't do this very often, but almost every song has a feature. Yeah. Well, when I was like listening to it, it was like sometimes I forget that it's a game album. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I forget it's the game rapping on here because it's kind of a uh, what do they call it? One of those um, abstract. It's an abstract record. Like it's uh, a, it's a yeah. concept album. Yeah, you know, which was kind of cool because. I mean, Jesus Peace, it was themed and like the whole, the whole album, I mean, is got references to religion in some way, shape or form. Yeah. And the album cover, there's two covers. Um, yeah. Apparently the song Jesus Peace or something was supposed to be on one of his other records, but it didn't make it. So he decided to make a whole album of the Jesus Peace theme. Oh, and uh, they he came out with this cover with you can see Jesus on there with the mm-hmm. a, a rag covering his face and you know a gold piece and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But the uh, motherfucking new COVID was coming. Yeah, I was gonna say, man, it's perfect for twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. He's like, y'all need this on your face. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, he's. I was gonna say the necklace he's wearing is that the game? 
like I can't it's hard to tell if that's the game's face or if that's an actual Jesus face. I don't know. It looks like Jesus. Like Jesus wearing Jesus. That's that's a paradox. I think that's the right word. <laughs> I I like the cover though. It's it's pretty cool. Um, I dig it too. Like stained glass, like Catholic. You know those Catholic glass church things. You know. Right. That's what it reminds me of. I don't know. I don't think it's too disrespectful or anything. It's like okay. I don't think so either. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't remember if there was any controversy with that cover or not. Oh yeah, there was. The uh let's see. Is that yeah. why he changed the cover and put his brother's picture on there? Yeah, he released the cover on Instagram, believe it or not. I can't believe Instagram's been around that long. In 2012. Yeah. And uh you know, the he, he's got the pyro blood rag over his face and everything but um right somebody let's see who designed this mike so mike there's Sanito actually designed it but okay. the catholic church sent a letter to interscope and told them they weren't down with it oh no nah. yeah so there were some letters uh they didn't like oh, it. yeah mike saputo and I don't know if the record cover was later on, like, uh, edited. But all I know is that they decided to come out when, I bet you the physical copy has his brother's face on it. Because they decided to put his two. brother's face on it. Mm, so I'm looking, there's two covers with Jesus on it. Um the stained glass behind them is slightly different. Hmm. Uh, there's a version with like marijuana leaves and palm trees in the background. Oh. And then there's like crosses and like, I don't know, it looks like some sort of designer type of logos in the background. I don't know. He wears that fancy ass Gucci shit or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> That's kind of what it resembles. But then there's another one with the palm trees and then the marijuana leaves are off. And then the background has crosses and microphones. I think that's the one you're looking at. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at on Spotify and Wikipedia. So on uh, Genius.com, they have an alternate version of that one. So they have all three covers there. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. And Jesus is spelled with the number five. So it's J-E-5-U-S. So I guess this was Game's fifth album. I'm guessing that's why they did that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so a couple so of different variations yeah, here. Like three album covers for it. But I know that the uh, the standard edition has his brother's face on it. So the one without the extra tracks. Uh, okay. But there's like three different versions of extra tracks. Yeah. So maybe that's what the colors You're... signify too. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's true. All I know is that like iTunes has a different version than Spotify. I'm not sure. I, I looked at Tidal even, and I think Tidal has the same one as Spotify, I think. Because I noticed that they both have 15 tracks. Because there was a track I was looking for that was not to be found. It's only on the Apple uh, iTunes store. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Blood? Blood Us? No, it wasn't Blood Diamonds. Blood Diamonds? No. no. Uh, I'll have to look. But it's kind of crazy, man. I didn't know that there was going to be so much homework on this thing. Yeah, I mean, so they had, it looks like there's a, there's versions with like uh, Blood of Christ, Dead People. Okay, that's and the way holy I'm water. About. Yeah, I think Dead People is only on iTunes and Holy Water. I don't think I found that one at all. Holy Water is on the EP that came out before this. It was more like a mixtape EP, though. I don't think it actually ever saw the. Uh, it didn't have an official release. It was just like a a download he had up. I think it was like five or six songs, but Holy Water was on that. And I remember that song being pretty dope. I don't 
really remember what it sounds off what it sounds like off the top of my head but yeah well the one that we'll be checking out is spotify um we'll refer to the other tracks if we have to but it's kind of already a long record um I'd probably find the the missing songs on YouTube even if I wanted. But yeah. you know, I listened to the one on Spotify. And uh yeah, you know, I like that they chose this record cover over the other one. No disrespect to yeah. the other, but it's just such a cool cover, so. Yeah, I agree. It's an awesome cover. I um and I think I was playing Spotify on random and one of the tracks came up and I was like, Oh man, I forgot about this record. The first time that I heard it, I, I only heard it once before I, I caught mm-hmm. it on Spotify and you had bought it and we were bumping it. And I was like, I was pretty fucked up that night. And I was like, this album ain't too bad. I might revisit this right. later down the line. And you know, I never did years later. And then I remembered about it. So I checked it out and I was like, yeah, this is worth it, man. We'll check it out. Yeah. It's, um, it was a good album. I like that there's a theme to it and he actually wrote to the theme. I don't think a lot of people do that nowadays. Yeah. I'm always curious about, you know, since I grew up in church, I'm always curious about right. rappers, how, what they think about church and all that, you know? Right. I was like, listen, like, what, what does this guy think? You know, you got like the game on this record and some other rappers that'll go across, across the religious lines are like, like tech nine even, or yeah. Nas, Isham, of course, yeah. one of the first, right. Uh, just, it's interesting when they cross that religious line. Cause it's kind of like, nobody agrees with anybody, but here's my take. It's right. It's interesting. Yeah. You'll have to, uh, check out Snoop Dogg's. Um, gospel album. Yeah, I haven't I have, heard it before. Yeah, me neither. I've actually. been curious about it. Yeah, yeah, that's one um, on. that, that's on the bucket list. Yeah. So yeah, this album came out in what 2012. It's crazy. Yeah, it's right at the end of the year. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and everybody thought the world was going to end. The Mayan calendar. Oh yeah, that's right, huh? The Mayan calendar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or was that the? Yeah, that was the Mayan calendar, right? Yeah, it was 2012. Or was it the Aztec calendar? I don't remember, but yeah, <clears throat> it was a calendar made out of rock. We know that, right? <laughs> so I don't remember having any expectations. I didn't even know the record was coming out. I didn't know that there was any drama with the cover. I don't even think I had Instagram. So. Yeah, I don't think I did either back then. Um, You know, as far as expectations, I was kind of, you know, what came out before that? Um, LAX, did it come out after that? I don't know. Uh, No, so Jesus Peace was after the Red Album, so. Yeah, the Red Album was one that, yeah, that one didn't sit well with me either. Like, I went through, uh, like, Documentary, Doctor's Advocate, and LAX were all pretty good, and then the Red Album didn't really care for that one, and Jesus yeah. Peace, I remember listening to that, and for whatever reason, I bumped it and didn't really come back to it. Mm, well, and yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, it looks like he took a break there for a little bit. Yeah. Um three years before the next album after Jesus Peace, but Damn, that's crazy. And it is one, two, three, four, five. It is his fifth album. Hmm. Let's get let's uh, check it out. Let's do it. On this thing. So the album starts off with Scared Now featuring Me- Meek Mill. Mm-hmm. I think it was a, a dark way to start it. Especially when you've heard it a couple times and you compare this track to the other songs on it. This is probably the yep. darkest track. Yeah, you know, I don't know. If yeah, you want to say it's, it's an interesting track, way to yeah. start it too, because I mean, you got some G Unit disses in there, and he's talking about yeah. like the beef with um, uh, 
50 and Interscope. And you got Meek Mill in there, who's from uh, Maybach Music, and we know yeah. he had beef with 52. Oh, yeah. Anybody who hangs out with uh, Rick Ross has got beef with 50. Yep. So, yeah, I thought it was a good way to start the album down. And yeah. it doesn't really go along with the theme of the album. So it's kind of good to get that track out of the way right at the very beginning. Yeah, get some shit off of his chest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if there was any track that needed it or that was catering to it, it would be this one right here because it was a pretty dark beat. So it's dope. So I like the track, man. I gave that one a nine. I was like, yeah, it's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I had that around nine or eight. Yeah. So then, you know, the next track here is Sam Producer and uh, yep. Ali Bama Ye. Is that how you say it? Ali, Ali Bumaye. Boom, Bumaye. Two Chains and the Bow Srick Rouse on here. Yep. I think it's an epic beat. I like the style. A little bit of reggae flavor. Yeah. A little bit. The track is cool. And, um, the name, let me see here. Let's see. You know, the last track he bad. had Meek Mill and on this one, he's got Rick Ross. So he's, Almost like yeah. making this weird alliance, you know, with uh, Rick Ross. Yeah. He's kind of showing what side he's on, like, definitely now. Or at least who his friends are. I don't know. He's probably just looking at 50 like, you mad, bro? Pretty much. I think it's kind of like, a, you know, like a, a jab. Yeah, it's like a jab. But, uh. So it looks like Ale Bumaye was, uh, let's see. So it looks like it was when the rumble in the jungle against George Foreman in 1974. <laughs> nice. The crowd was chanting Ale Bumaye, which means Ali kill him. Ale Bumaye. That's crazy. All right, man. Yeah, I'll this track's that. pretty cool. I did. I gave this one a, it was, between a nine and an eight, or eight and a nine. Yeah, yeah, I gave it a nine. Next track here, the title piece, you know, Jesus piece. I gave yeah. this one a ten. I loved it. I thought the the God lyrics were dope. Common surprised mm -hmm. me on here, and um, it made me actually think about listening to one of his records. Yeah, yeah think about it. Yeah, I yeah. like this too. It's got a cool message, and yeah, the lyrics are cool. Yeah. Um. You know what I noticed? On the hook, Game sounds like he's sick. And I didn't know if he really was or if he just changed his voice, but like, almost sounds like he's sick. I don't know. He might have been. Maybe not, too sick to be. Not anything that. To do a verse. Maybe under the weather. Who knows? Well, like, his verse sounds okay. Sounds like his voice, but when he hits the hook, it sounds just a little different. Hmm. It's something that I wondered about when I was hearing it. Yeah. It doesn't really contribute to the song at all but yeah uh, he's listed as one of the artists on here and he is but he doesn't contribute much like he's not listed or he's not credited with the beat just a little right. bit of a hook you know but uh i like the track it's one of my favorite ones on there i i gave it a 10 yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah his voice just sounds like he's a little sick yeah Kanye it does sound a little bit under the weather on this one it's crazy but it worked oh I meant game oh are you saying the game yeah on the hook I'm gonna have to listen to it again then. he might be man what'd you think of the track as a whole anyways uh it was pretty cool, man. It's the the title track. Um, you know, Kanye and Game. I like when they collab. Yeah. They got a couple of good tracks out there, and um, you know, it was good. I like it. Common did his thing on there too. 
He got some producers on here that he hasn't really worked with, and I think they're Commons people, but I don't know for sure. But uh, maybe, yeah, man, I liked it. So you got good, these good title track. These four rappers that have kind of become the pillars of like the new school, which might not be so new anymore. But you got, a, I'm thinking Kanye, Game, yeah, Nas, and Rick Ross. Yep. Like you notice how when they get together, they just make like epic shit, and they keep like getting together. Yep. Yeah. It's like this hidden alliance. Yeah, it's a hidden alliance, and it's almost like, I mean, these are all the people that 50 Cent hates on. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> 50 made that, man. Yeah. So, next track then, Pray. J. Cole, J. M. S. N. on the hook. I liked Pray. It's slower. Yeah. I like the message. You know, it's chill, but uh, I like the track a lot. I like the placement of the track. It makes the pacing good. It kind of lets you breathe a little bit. You know, you get to chill after the three upbeat tracks. And the track is good. You know, it's a dope beat. You know, I, I scored this one an eight. Um, I like yeah, it. and he, he he's using that bone flow on here. Yeah, that's true. He he does have that little bone flow on there. So it's a cool track, man. Next track, Church. Trey Songs, King Chip, Game. It's more upbeat than the last I'm trying one. Trying to go to church. It does yeah. kind of continue the pace. I don't know. It does get more upbeat, though. I like the point of view on this one, mm-hmm. how they're rapping about it, you know. Yeah, man, you go to church, you still do your thing, you know, like Yeah. Not not everybody can follow the word by to the T, you know. Oh no, no one's perfect, man. That's what I I, I might like <laughs> no. that about this record is that it's like no one's perfect, man. I like the right. guys that just put it on record. It's dope. Yeah, like, man. Yeah. I mean we, we all have, you know, our, our vices and I mean we do shit. Yeah, that, show. you know. Hey, everybody's trying to make progress, man. And nobody hits that perfection exactly. ever. Good track, though. I scored it an eight. It was a good song. What do we got now? Yeah. Yeah, what do you hit think? this one with an eight, too. Yeah. I like it. You know, it's, it's pretty much just church and strippers for the most part. But, yeah, church and you know, strippers. Who would have thought? <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I dig it. All right. Next track, then we got all that lady. We got some classic Wayne on here for sure. Um, yeah. It, Jeremiah on the hook. Yeah. It, it picks up, you know, I think the mood picks up on this song. Um, a little more upbeat, you know, but I, I like the beat, you know, the bass there is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this song is pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of all kind of um, tribute to the ladies here. Yeah. And uh, the weird thing for me was Fabulous's verse. I don't know why it got cut off. But, I mean, other than that, yeah, the beat's cool. I don't mind this track at all. I hit it with an eight. Yeah. Same here. I give it an eight. Uh, Let's see. Next track, then, we got Heaven's Arms here. I thought that uh, this is a great track. Uh, The beat's really good. Um, He showcases his lyrics here. And um, it keeps the album going. Yeah, Heaven's Arms, it's got a cool hook. Although the beginning of the hook sounds like it's part of the verse, always confuses me. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. A little bit of a slowdown here. Yeah, I think I the, gave this one a seven. Did you? Yeah, I like it. I gave it a nine. I I felt like he's hitting some epic tracks here. Um. Nice. I'm not really sure how to explain Epic, but it just sounds like it's a bigger beat than he's usually on or something. 
Mm-hmm. Kind of crazy. So, hey, it still goes with the theme of the record. It passes. Next track, Name Me King. This one is really good. Um, yeah. You know, Pusha T does his thing on it. I'm not really that familiar with Pusha T. I know, I think the beat is great. I like yeah. how the album is flowing. I really like the beat too. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, Push T does his thing here. I never really have heard him before. He kind of sounds like Kanye at times. Um, but that's a pretty dope track. Yeah. I hit that one with an eight. Name me King. I gave it a 10. Nice. So the next track then, See No Evil. This is where uh, we get a little bit of Kendrick Lamar. Yep. What'd you think of this song? Uh, I like the the presentation of the track. You know, the the drums are kind of uh, a word I'm looking for here. Um, a little more bare, right? So it kind of adds a little ambience to the track. Yeah. But, um, This is the track where Game was kind of channeling Biggie, right? I think it is. Yeah. 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 And it was kind of crazy how he was doing that. Um, I don't even remember if he said anything about Biggie on this track. But um, I caught the, the channeling of it, and I was like, that ain't just me, man. And, you know, you caught it, too. No, you- it's kind of crazy how he, how he does that, you know? Yeah, as far as I know, I don't think he gave him any, or he didn't name drop Biggie's name on this track at all. Yeah. But uh, I dig the track. It's it, To me, it's a little bit on the slower side, but uh, it, it's a good one to bump. I dig it. I gave this one an eight. Nice. I like it. I gave it a nine. I'm scoring obviously a little high for some reason, but it hit me pretty well. Uh, most of these songs, anyways. Yeah, uh, it's it's a good album. Kendrick, you know, I'm Kendrick going back and listening to it again. Yeah. So let's go on. Get on to the next track here. Can't get right. All right. What do you think about this one? Can't get right was cool. Um, this is where he talks about. Uh, I don't know if you'd call it a beef with Dr. Dre, but he's a little sour about Dre not finishing a lot of his music. Yeah. And uh, I thought that part of the track was cool. You kind of get to hear about that. I mean, I mean, I heard this a long time ago and I didn't catch that and hearing it again uh, for the podcast, I was like, Oh damn. Okay. I didn't know about that, but um, I like it. Can't get right. was dope. Yeah, I think it was um, it was dope. A um, little out of place. Uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to uh, the theme of the record. Um, yeah, it just goes. And I wonder if it was recorded topic. for another project or not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a cool track. I you know I give it a seven. I think I was just kind of like, wait, this one is a little just doesn't belong on this record. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, is Can't Get Right the one that was only on the deluxe version, but now that was Church. Hmm. Well, I guess I can't yeah, really can't be mad. Right. It does, it isn't, I mean, he does reference not I mean, wanting you, to go to hell and all that stuff, so maybe it is still in line with the theme of the right. record. Right, and you still have the choir in the background. Yeah. That can't I mean, be too harsh on adds, man. Yeah. You know, the hook it's got, totally, yep. yeah, it, it's an eight. Mm-hmm. I retract my score on it. I give it an eight. Nice. Um, it's good. Give that one a nine. Nice. All right, next track then. Hallelujah. I like this song. This one is pretty upbeat. I think it's perfect for the record. Yeah. It feels good, man, when you I listen like it to too. it. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, I like the song too. It definitely gives you the church vibes. Yeah. Uh, shit makes you want to sing the song out loud. You know, like it's it's good. Yeah, for sure. Jamie Foxx does his thing on there. I gave that one a ten. Yeah, I gave it a ten. I gave it a ten. I thought it was fun. It was good for the record. And uh, the references to God, the Holy Ghost, everything is good, man. Mm-hmm. It belonged on the record, and it's a dope track. So, yeah, next track then, Freedom. Freedom. It has Freedom has a really good bass to it. And I like how it starts off kind of dark and slow with that little uh, keyboard or organ, whatever you want to call that. There. Yeah. Like I'm yeah, not sure what to Yeah, it's a sample that's starts. sped up. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they got a record playing and it's playing a little fast. Yeah. But I think it's the sample. And this is by Amadeus, the producer. Yeah, that's right. I see. the only track he has on here. Yep. It's a cool track, though. Um, yeah, it's got a good vibe. I dig it. Yeah, it's not like the most exciting track on here, but it does no wrong either, you know. Right. Um, I can't I can't hate it. I give it a nine actually. It's a pretty fun track, so Yeah, that's pretty cool. I uh I gave it a nine too. So then this is probably where the album should have ended. What we think. Right, yeah, because you know? we have Kevin Hart at the end with yeah. the skit, um, doing his little uh speech on God and not yeah. being perfect and basically just telling people to be themselves and just do the best you can. Yeah, it should it should end right there, really. Yeah. But hey, free tracks. Exactly. Next song, Celebration. Uh, I gave this yeah. one a nine. I was impressed that they, you know, remixed first of the month. And yep. uh, it was pretty good. It, they did a good they, enough job with it. They definitely get, you know, bonus points for the remix. And, you know, I don't know how you could remix this song any other way, but they, they did it. They did their thing on here. Um, I also like that there's a version out there with Bone Thugs and there's an official video for it too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, man, I want to, after the podcast is over, I got to go back and check that out. Yeah. I gave this one a nine. Um, I like the remix. Lil Wayne does his thing on there. Chris Brown on the hook. Wiz Khalifa does his thing too. So it's it's a cool track. Yeah, that's a cool track. They do their thing. It's a fun track, like you know. Tribute. Yeah, it's a tribute. It's a, I re, I respect it. It's a tribute track. He didn't fuck it up. Next track here. I remember. The feature in GZ and Future. Yeah, I love this track. I I had to give this one a 10, man. It's just such a fun track. So dope. Yeah, I I did the same. The hook is hilarious. Yeah. It's some gangsta shit, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's fucking dope. Yeah. I just put that, put that, whatever, that brick in front of me, and I remember... Drugs, drugs and pussy. Drugs and pussy, right in my face. I remember. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, the guy who did the beat, who was it? It was uh, Young Lad and Cool and Dre. Okay, Cool and Dre's been doing some good shit all over this record. Um, yeah, I never, I never heard of Young Lad, but uh, I like this track, man. Uh, Young Jeezy does fantastic on here good enough for me to go check out his other records after i listen to this yeah, track yeah i'm like all right i didn't really care necessarily about all of jeezy stuff but you know he's on the radar you know i give him that so um it was a it was a cool bonus track i'm glad he put it on here so yeah i give that one a 10 man it's one of my favorites on here yeah it's a good one so then the last track that we'll go over is blood diamonds Cause it's the last one on the Jesus Peace Deluxe on Spotify, anyways. Right. 
We don't have the Best uh, Buy tracks. Diamond. Apple Music has another track instead. But yeah, and this is produced by Pooh Cat. Is that what I'm seeing? Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. So on Wiki, it's a little different, but um, I'm looking at it on Genius, and it has Pooh Cat, J Rhodes, and S1. Huh. As the producers, and then I think the Wiki has the same thing, except Greg Fears must be Pooh Cat. I mean, I don't know. But um, I dig the beat. I like the sample in the background. Um, I think it's a great way to end the album. It ends on a strong note. I gave it a 10. Yeah. I uh, I gave it an 8. It's not one of my favorite tracks, but, you know, it's cool. I could start to feel at this point like I'm over it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, the track doesn't do anything wrong either. But... um. It's all right. It feels like a bonus track to me. I mean, it is a bonus track, so whatever. Yeah. So all in all, man, what do you, uh, as a whole, now that we went through the record, you know, ran mm -hmm. through it again here, what do you think about it as a whole, you know? Um, and you're the you game know, expert a... here. You got, you got all the game stuff. Yeah, um, man. Um, so right out of the gate, you know, I, I didn't listen to this album a lot. And, you know, I listened to a lot of gang stuff. And I think originally what kind of turned me off on it was all the features that were on there. Um, artists that I don't listen to, especially in 2012, you know, like nowadays I listen to a little bit of Wiz Khalifa and Kendrick Lamar and uh, Rick Ross. But 2012, I mean, I don't know how much Rick Ross we were listening to back then. Um and then, you know, the other guys on here. But um, coming back through it again, listening to it again, you know, open-minded, giving these guys a shot. Um, you know, I gave it, man, it's like right in between an eight and a nine. Um, I think for me, being a fan of the game, uh, I'm going to give it an eight. Yeah. Um, I, I like the, the theme. And he did a great job writing to it and putting the, the track collection together for Jesus Peace. Yeah. Um, I wish we could get more albums that, you know, kind of are built on a theme. You know, nowadays it's just a co compilation of tracks for a lot of people. Um, but with that being said, man, I'm probably going to hit it with an eight. Yeah. Um, I dig it. Uh, probably going to go back and listen to it a lot more now. Yeah, um, I uh, if if you had to, well, let me score it. I'm gonna give it nine. Uh, I, I mm -hmm. gave it. I'm gonna give it nine. Turned around, Jesus pieces. <laughs> I think I said that right. <laughs> I I love that skit. It's hilarious. Like, oh, let me turn my piece. Yeah, Here comes Kanye. I'm gonna give it nine. Turned around, <laughs> Jesus pieces. Um, I was pretty impressed with listening to the album. Um, I didn't really have a, a starting point or an expectation of it. Like, yeah, I, I have that uh, benefit, I guess, that I'm not like a, a game snob or an expert or nothing. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I just know what my ear likes. You know what I mean? And um, right. yeah, I listened to it with an open mind and I and I liked like all of the trucks. Like, I don't think I had any that scored much like anything than eight. You know, I had one seven. I changed my mind. I made it an eight. Um, yeah. So I, and I had like I think I had like four tens or something. So all in all, I got to give it a nine. It's uh, something that'll probably hit my rotation. Um, like sometimes I even forget it's a game album, and that's probably because it has so many features on it. You know, it's crazy. Right. And the beats are different than anything I've heard um, from the game in the past. So mm -hmm. it's a crazy little record. Yeah, I mean, he kind of let go of the whole, like, you don't really get, you don't hear the West Coast this, West Coast that, West Side, West Side, and, you know, all of that stuff. You get a little bit of it in there, but, yeah, like, this is very focused on the theme, and I think that's kind of what sets it apart from the other stuff that games have done in the past. So, if you had, like, three favorite tracks on here, which ones are you going to call out? Um, I'm going to go with Ali Boumaye. Um, Hallelujah. 
and church. I like church. Nice. I'm going to go with uh, my three that I got started here. I'm going to go with Jesus, peace, hallelujah, and remember. Nice. So, What's the crown jewel on this record? Ooh, the crown jewel. That's a good one, Lion. Um, crown jewel. It might, you know, it might be I remember. I think it's I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to run with that, I didn't man. take it as my top three, but, like, that track is dope. And, uh, that track yeah, is just I mean, gangsta, man. It's just gutter. Fucking dope. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Is it a bonus track? Maybe, but yeah, I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to I remember as well. I love Hallelujah, but uh, I yep. remember is just so. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. I was going to go with Hallelujah, but you know, I remember is the, the more gangster, more yeah, you know, more rappable. Uh, yeah, I mean the, the lyrics are dope. It's gangster gutter, like you were saying. It's dope. Yeah, it's fucking dope. All right, man. Well, shit, man. That's going to wrap it up, man. I love the record. I thought it was cool. It was a surprise for me. Uh, yeah. Like, I actually kind of like this record, man. Don't yeah, man. It. When you threw it out there uh, for the next podcast, I was like, all right, cool. I was a little surprised, man. Like, oh, shit. He picked a game album. Way out of left field, too. Like, yeah. Like, this, this game album doesn't get that much attention anywhere that I can see. Right. Or it doesn't get talked about. Uh, I thought it was a fun record though um, The producers that he picked on here Were, were pretty good He's got a good ear for music um, The uh, Cool and Dre guy I think him and uh, Game Should probably work more together I don't know it could be a duo. They work a lot together um, uh, At least on the previous albums I can't really I know that he's done stuff On um, stuff after Jesus Peace But yeah. I, I don't know exactly how much But uh, they they work together quite a bit. I like Cool and Dre's music. Nice. Well, I think that'll do it, man. Hit us up at rapthrowback.com. Leave us a comment there on the website, voicemail even. Check out our YouTube page, man. We're throwing some shit up there. Uh, yeah, follow us on uh, whatever, man. Spotify, SoundCloud, all that good shit. And uh, we out, man. We're going to be doing the year-end wrap-up probably next week or the week after man it's it's december yeah it's december yeah man yeah it's the last month of the year man we're hitting 2022 yeah damn it's crazy hey 2022 will be hot watch we have some dope records on here so hell yeah all right this is your boy megatron signing out then Soundwave out another one in the books another one in the books peace peace